Stellar Blade kind of blew up the internet recently. In this game, you play as Eve, a warrior who is trying to help humanity take Earth back from an invasive species of alien known as the Natiba. However, if you ask the gooners on Twitter, they will say that this game is about jiggle physics and ending wokeness or something like that. And like, I kind of get where they're coming from. When that gameplay trailer dropped, who among us did not say, Holy shit, look at them buns! Because that's literally what the developers wanted. The game's director said that they put special care into designing the back of Eve's character model, since that's what players will be looking at the entire game. But I'm not here to talk about jiggle physics, massive Tehunka Henkaloos, or even Eve's backside. I'm here to talk about Stellar Blade's backstory and its lore, which is pretty interesting. So as I said earlier, Earth was invaded by an alien species known as the Natiba. Before that, humanity was pretty well advanced. They had a colony in space for the ultra-rich, and they had massive cities on the ground. 807 is one of the cities that you visit, and it exhibits multiple colossal statues, which kind of gives this future version of humanity an almost neo-Roman feel to them. 807 appears to be named after the Eidos Company, one of three major corporations that are name-dropped in Stellar Blade's lore. The other two are Terrastar and Orca Aerospace Company. Eidos seems more interested in consumerist quality of life products, Terrastar on nanotechnology, and Orca on defense tech. Eidos's AI controlled technology was on paper supposed to enhance the lives of its customers. Two such examples were the Exospine and the Gear Socket, which was a customizable slot that you could fit with a wide variety of enhancements that became as popular as clothing among the general populace. However, it is worth noting that the CEOs of these companies refused to use their own products, claiming that they should go to those who needed them more. A somewhat widely believed answer was that those companies were doing extensive data mining and putting back doors and wiretaps into whatever tech they sold, but the media always painted the people who believed that as whack jobs and conspiracy theorists. A small lore blurb says that towards the end of humanity's reign on Earth, a lot of tech started being designed by AI and it was far beyond what the engineers could even comprehend but the results were undeniable, so the products were put to shelves. There were also droids, drones, and automatons that were commonplace in society, and cryptocurrency had completely replaced cash. Essentially, what you need to know is humanity was absolutely reliant on quality of life boosting technology, and these three corporations were behind it, especially Eidos. There is another figure that pops up a lot in Stellar Blade's lore called the Mother Sphere. It seems to be some sort of matriarch to humanity. I could be way off, but to me it sounds like a sort of guiding AI leader that people deem as like a prophet or a god. It designed some of the equipment and armor that you use, and seems to have a lot of say and oversight in what humanity does in their fight against the Natiba. She's also referred to with a lot of reverence from a lot of the characters in Stellar Blade. So to recap, at this point in Stellar Blade's lore, we have a population that is entirely dependent on technology and borderline worships a super smart AI that calls the shots for everything that they do. So it sounds like they're pretty well protected. The Natiba invasion is described as having occurred out of nowhere, happening all at once, and humanity was completely blindsided and ravaged by it. Casualties were likely in the billions. Humans were forced to evacuate to the colony in space, but there wasn't room for everyone, so most people were left for the Natiba. Meanwhile, Eidos immediately shut down all of their facilities on Earth, which led to them being looted by desperate or opportunistic people, which actually was kind of a blessing in disguise. You see, the Natiba are tentacly creatures that can evolve and adapt to their environment incredibly fast. Some of them learned how to imitate statues to ambush people, some of them imitate life forms on Earth, another kind of uses electromagnetic fields to float, and others still can find machine cores and weaponry created by humans and graft them onto their bodies to increase their energy output and lethality. So the Eidos facilities being looted prevented the Natiba from getting to take all of the technology for themselves right at once. To make matters worse, most of the automaton population was corrupted and became hostile towards humanity. Whether it was the Natiba or some rogue AI, it's currently unknown. Also worth noting that a log that you find on a dead body laments that the Mother Sphere also stopped making contact with those left stranded on Earth once the important people made it up to the space colony. So humanity was pretty casually torn apart by these invaders, and the final stand against the Natiba was in 807. After that city fell, all of human life on Earth was presumed to be extinct by those who remained off-planet. When the events of Stellar Blade start, it has now been decades since the Natiba invaded. Orca Aerospace Company has bankrolled and funded an army with the plan of taking the Earth back, and that army is called the Airborne Squad. 
The developers have said that the members of the Airborne Squad are all human, though it's explicitly stated that they were created for the purpose of driving the Nativa to extinction. So maybe they're clones or they're specifically bred to be these femme fatale types with massive assets. I'm not too sure on that but they're trained for their whole lives for this purpose, armed with a skin tight suit and a pretty hair clip that turns into a sword. They're also armed to the teeth with all kinds of tech and trained to use beta skills, which sounds like the moves that I used to try to pick up girls in college. Eve, the main protagonist of Stellar Blade, is part of the 7th division of the Airborne Squad. She's said to be very unique from all the other members of the squad, but that's not elaborated on in any of the media that we currently have available. This game starts out with Eve as a part of the full force of the Airborne Squad reinvading Earth as a last ditch effort to take the planet back. They are all under the guidance of the Mother Sphere and have all of the confidence in the world. It immediately goes south. Almost as if they were previously aware, the Natiba take out most of the Airborne Squad before they have a chance to reach the surface. And most of those who do make it to the surface get turned into red smears on the ground by the Natiba, including Eve's squad leader, Tachi. Eve is about to be killed by an Alpha Natiba when she's saved at the last second by a human named Adam. So it turns out that contrary to what everybody believed, not all humans on the surface are dead. There are roughly 100,000 remaining in an underground city named Zion, but they're running low on power so most of them are in a sustained stasis to conserve energy. Adam's goal is to find a new power source to save what little remains of humanity, and is willing to help Eve take down the Alpha Natiba and eventually their leader, the Elder Natiba, as long as she helps him find that energy source. Together they meet up with Lily, a surviving member of the 5th Airborne Squad who supplies Eve with all of her tech. Lily is a devout follower of the Mother Sphere, as trailer footage shows her chewing out Adam for suggesting that the Mother Sphere is not divine. And that's about all that we have in terms of lore available to us from the demo, trailer footage, and developer statements at the time. So now bear with me while I take all of this and make an ass out of myself and guess what's going to happen in Stellar Blade. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Her name is Eve, his name is Adam, the world is mostly depopulated, yeah. To me, it's pretty interesting that Stellar Blade is using the creation mythology as a big inspiration for its mythos, but it does seem to be pulling from the Hebraic version of it rather than the Christian or Muslim version. For instance, while Adam and Eve are believed to be the first humans for multiple religions, there is a third first human in Jewish folklore that's named Lilith. Lilith was Adam's wife before Eve, and like Adam, she was created from the dust of the earth, but was banished from the Garden of Eden for not obeying Adam. After that, Lilith became a demon, and Eve was created by using one of Adam's ribs, instead of the dust of the earth, to therefore make her more subservient to him. Don't tell the gooners about the subservient thing. Going off of that, it kind of seems like Eve, Adam, and Lily are stand-ins for Eve, Adam, and Lilith, meaning that despite her plucky nature, I'm immediately sus of Lily. Also, based on how she's a massive simp for the Mother Sphere, and the Mother Sphere abandoned the people of Earth and didn't tell anyone that there were still people alive down there, she triggers my sesometer as well. Finally, this theory is a little bit more far-fetched, but I think the Natiba came from Earth as opposed to coming from another planet, and that's why humans were so caught off guard by the invasion. Do you remember how about 6 minutes and 14 seconds ago I said that towards the end of humanity's reign on Earth, a lot of the tech started being designed by AI and it was far beyond what the engineers could comprehend, but the results were undeniable so the product were put to shelves? Towards the end of humanity's reign on Earth, a lot of tech started being designed by AI and it was far beyond what the engineers could even comprehend, but the results were undeniable so the products were put to shelves. And a little bit later I mentioned that the Natiba are able to quickly adapt to any circumstance. I personally think that it's because the Natiba are at least semi-synthetic life forms that were created by these nanobots and the AI that had developed beyond the engineer's comprehension. Another piece of evidence that I think kind of supports this is that in the earlier trailers and press releases for Stellar Blade, the Natiba were going by a different name which was called the Natives. So putting it all together, I think the Natiba invasion was an inside job done by AI and quite possibly the Mother Sphere as well, and I think Lily is partially in on it. But that's just me spitballing and theorizing about a game a week before its release. So by the time you watch this, you'll probably have the information available to you so you can know if I'm a prophet or a fool, and you can comment in the comment section about how right or wrong I was. Ultimately, I found the demo for Stellar Blade super fun, and I found the lore incredibly interesting. It's a story that I really want to see develop and I want to see what happens in this game. 
However, that being said, I feel like it's very hard to convince people that you bought Stellar Blade for the gameplay and story. I don't know, maybe that's just me. But anyway, my name is Nick. I talk about video game lore for every game that I play. So if you like my stuff, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And let me know if there's any other games that you think I should look into the lore on. I'll catch you guys later.